Hello Potter people, welcome back to my channel. So today I have a very exciting video. As you can tell from the title, it is finally time for my bookshelf tour. It is behind me and I'm so excited to finally show you guys my new, well the shelves aren't new, but a lot of content is and everything's been changed around, moved about and I'm a lot happier with the layout of my shelves now than I was before, mainly because I've bought new things since then to be able to fill it out a bit better but also I feel like I've done a bit of a better job with how I display some of the things I had before. Um, so yes I'm very excited to show you guys my bookshelf tour. I wouldn't say I'm 100% happy with every single section but I'm an ongoing collector you know. My desire to collect Harry Potter things to display them whether on my shelves or elsewhere is never going to be over, it's never going to be done so Really, I should never be happy, 100% happy with my bookshelf because there's always more I can do to it. There's always more I could add to it along the way. So yes, I'm happy enough with how it is now to show you guys and that is good because I want to be able to film in front of them again instead of sitting on the bed which is what I've been doing my last couple videos. I just love having my bookshelves behind me, my collection behind me. I think it makes for a really good background layout. So yes I'm very excited to get on with the bookshelf tour but just before I do if you're new to my channel then please don't forget to subscribe to join my little magical corner and if you enjoyed this video then why not leave a like. Okay there's nothing else for it, let's go! Okay, so I'm going to start off with the top left section of my bookshelf, which holds all of my original Harry Potter books. These are the original books that I owned, the first ones that I read, and the books that I cherish more than anything else in my collection. With the exception of The Order of the Phoenix, that's not actually my original book. I actually bought that one last year to complete the collection because the one I had was the adult version and the cover, the slip, come, come off and I've lost it. So it was just a black book and it just didn't fit. So I had to buy another one. And just as obviously I had to buy a second hand one so it looked just as used and loved as the rest of my collection. My most prized possession probably has to be the Philosopher's Stone because I've had that book since, well, for as long as I can remember really. Uh, I think I got it for Christmas or my birthday one year. It must have been back in like maybe 1999 or 2000, something like that. So, you know, that book is really old. Same with Chamber of Secrets and Prisoner of Azkaban. I've had them all for years, I've grown up with them. And, you know, they, they are very old and tacky by now, but I can never replace them for newer versions just to make them look nicer. Because like I said, this is where it all began for me. This is my original collection. To the far left, I also have the Hogwarts Library, which is a box set which has Quidditch Through the Ages, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, and The Tales of Beedle the Bard. I do have other versions of those books, the ones that I've had a lot longer, and I believe are the original art on them, the original books that JK Rowling released for charity and at the moment I only have one of them which we'll see later on in this bookshelf tour. Right in front of the Hogwarts library is my Luna Lovegood Pop Funko and on top of my books you can see Luna Lovegood's Spectra Specs. The reason Luna and the Spectra Specs are in this section is because I wanted those two items on my bookshelf but I didn't really know where else to put them. I don't have enough Luna Lovegood related items to have her own section. I did have a Luna Lovegood section before but I wasn't really a fan of it so I thought for now until I figure out a way to actually have my own Luna Lovegood section maybe expand this bookshelf which is something I'm thinking about until then they're gonna stay in this section but I think it looks all right actually. I mean Luna Lovegood is one of my favorite characters so that is the biggest reason why I wanted her to be part of my bookshelf. Moving along one square, we have what is probably my favorite and most busy section of my bookshelf. I like to call this the Hogwarts classes section or just like the Hogwarts school section. Yeah, there are a lot of things in here as you can see. If we start with the two prints right at the back, we have a little canvas which came in a Geek Gear Wizardry box which has a H which stands for Hogwarts, it says Hogwarts in the middle of the H and all around are the four Hogwarts crests and the Hogwarts crest itself. Next to that I have a little frame which has a quote in it which says, when in doubt go to the library. This was, well, 
it says the quote is from Hermione Granger, but in actual fact, I believe Ron says this in one of the books. Ron Weasley says this about Hermione. You know Hermione, when in doubt, go to the library kind of thing. But nevertheless, it is spoken about Hermione, so I can forgive that possible misquote. Underneath that quote, there is just some bookshelves which could be from a library. And to me, that kind of represents the library. Above that we have a little owl, a little snowy owl which I got in a Geek Gear box. It's really cute and it's there to represent the owls of Hogwarts. In the front in the middle I have a pot or a mug which says Apocathry Department on the front. This I am using to represent as a cauldron because it looks very cauldron-y. I really do like this mug, it's really effective to represent a cauldron. Inside on the top you can see a pot of eagle owl feathers which is a potion ingredient I got from a subscription box and also sticking out of the cauldron is a feather which is actually a buckbeak feather which I got from Lit Joy Crate. I didn't get the actual box it came in, I just ordered it separately online. It came with a letter from Sirius to Harry which I do still have but sadly isn't on the bookshelf. But again, I thought it looked really good there and I thought that could represent care of magical creatures. To the left of the cauldron we have one of my newest additions to my bookshelf. This is a mandrake we got from a recent Geek Gear Wizardry box and is one of my favourite items in this section. And of course it's there to represent herbology. All around the cauldron mug we have more lots of little potions and potion ingredients. We have powdered root of bicorn, some lavender, polyjuice potion. I actually have two polyjuice potions, one's from a subscription box and one is these tiny little potion pots I actually got empty and I filled out myself. So I have a tiny little bottle of polyjuice potion, one of bezoar stones and one of flu powder and to the right we have some flux weed. Most of these potions and ingredients came out of a certain subscription box that shall not be named. To the right at the front I have a glass orb fortune telling divination thing. Uh, I can't remember what they're actually called but yes that's there to represent divination. Right at the front at the bottom I have this really beautiful purple quill which I ordered offline. The crystal ball I also got offline. I just felt like I wanted a quill to represent, I guess, exams and homework and things like that. And to the left of that, I have a bottle of ink which came with it. Just behind the ink pot, we have Neville Longbottom, the Funko Pop. Again, like the Luna Pop, I didn't really know what to do with him. I don't have any other items to have like a Neville Longbottom section or something like that. And again, Neville's one of my favorite characters, so I wanted him on my bookshelf. And I thought, why not put him in this section right next to the Mandrake? Because as we all know, as most most of us should know, Neville ends up becoming a herbology teacher at Hogwarts, so there's that reference. And also near the back to the right, I forgot to mention, I have a what looks like a scroll of parchment. That is actually something that came out of Harry Potter's artifact box from Noble Collection. It's actually, I think it's a list of all of the DA members you know, when they signed their name on the bit of parchment. I think that's what that actually is. But I thought it looked cool, propped up, you know, to represent parchment because, you know, they use a lot of parchment at Hogwarts when they're doing their homework and things. So that is my Hogwarts classes section. <laughs> Once again, moving along one section, we have one of my favorite sections of my bookshelf. This is the magical creatures section. So I have four magical creatures from Noble Collection. I have the beautiful purpley pink Fwooper, the just as beautiful blue Okami, and behind I have the Niffler and the Thunderbird. Also in the middle, I have a bold truckle, which isn't the Noble Collection version. It is actually one I bought offline and at the front to the right I have a Okami egg which came from Geek Gear. Again one of my favourite items ever to have been received from Geek Gear and of course it had to go with the Okami magical creature because it is you know the same thing and I think they go really well together. I had a bit of trouble trying to figure out how to display these magical creatures. I wanted the two at the back to be more on display so I decided to put them on top of the boxes that came with the magical creatures so that you can see them a bit better. But maybe in the future I'd like to get something to section off that bookshelf so that I could perhaps have 
uh, like a little shelf or something so perhaps I could have the two magical creatures resting on a shelf instead of those boxes. But that's something to consider in the future. I did a video recently all about these magical creatures giving you a close-up review of each creature so go and take a look at that if you haven't already. And yeah, I don't think there's much else to say about this. It's pretty self-explanatory. And now we're on to what is probably my favourite section in my entire bookshelf because it holds my most prized possession, my most expensive collectible from Noble Collection. This is the beautiful, magnificent Hogwarts Castle sculpture. I absolutely love this castle. It cost so much money, but it was worth every single penny. I again did a video all about this castle, giving you close-ups and my own little review on it. So again, go and watch that if you haven't. But yeah, what else can I say about it that I didn't say in that video? It's Hogwarts Castle. It's the one item I've wanted more than anything else in the world. And I'm so glad and happy and I feel so lucky to be able to afford it and to have it in my possession at last. Yes, I absolutely love it and I hope you guys can see why. It's so detailed, everything is there from the boathouse which isn't crystal, the alley at the back, Hagrid's cabin even is there. Yeah, like I said, everything is there apart from maybe the Forbidden Forest is the only thing that's missing. Oh and the Quidditch pitch but they couldn't fit that on. Um, but yeah, it's absolutely stunning. I love it so much. Moving one section down right below my beloved castle, I have three illustrated books. These are the illustrated editions of the Philosopher's Stone, Chamber of Secrets and Prisoner of Azkaban. These are all of the illustrated editions of the original story that are out. The Goblet of Fire will be coming out later on this year and of course will be added to this collection. These are one of two versions of the original story that I am collecting. You will see the other versions later on in the video. But yes, they are absolutely beautiful. They are all illustrated by Jim Kay and they are beautiful illustrations. I definitely recommend getting them. These three books are being propped up by a bookend. This bookend is from the Noble Collection. It is of Dobby. I really love this bookend. I bought it because when I was stacking these illustrated editions up back in my last house, they kept falling down. And what's better thing to get to prop up the books with than a Dobby bookend. Right at the back I have a glass bottle which has one of my favourite Harry Potter quotes on. Happiness can be found even in the darkest of times if one only remembers to turn on the light. Inside the bottle there are fairy lights and it of course lights up. I'm actually going to show you guys now. And there it is all lit up. Of course it would look better if it was darker but it's still quite effective. I really like the quote. I really like the bottle. I think I found this on Etsy. If not, it was probably eBay or Amazon or something like that. I bought it because I wanted some Harry Potter magical fairy lights in a bottle. And uh, I found this and I thought, yeah, that's perfect. Right at the front, I have another Noble Collection item. These are the three Gringotts coins. So you have a galleon, a sickle and a canut or a nut. I'm never quite sure whether or not it's pronounced canut or nut. I've always pronounced it canut myself but I don't know if that's because it's meant to be a silent K or not. Moving along one square we have one of my favourite sections. This is the Horcrux section. So to the left at the front we have my beloved Slytherin locket pendant. This like many other items in this section are from Noble Collection. It is the Slytherin locket. It is one of the Horcruxes destroyed by Ron Weasley in Deathly Hallows and yeah it's absolutely beautiful and I'm so glad I have it. On the other side I have my beautiful Hufflepuff cup. It hurt me a little bit taking this cup out of my Hufflepuff section where it was originally but it is a Horcrux. I have a smaller Hufflepuff cup anyway which is in my Hufflepuff section so definitely I had to have the cup in this section. This again is from Noble Collection and of course it's just beautiful. It has a little badger engraved on it. Behind that near the back I have another Noble Collection item. This is the just as beautiful Horcrux Slytherin ring, one of my newest additions to my collection and something I haven't actually talked about yet. I bought it recently. I actually bought it the same time I bought the Hogwarts castle and the Fwoopa magical creature. Another thing I love about the Slytherin ring is the fact that it is actually also the resurrection stone. The stone on the top is the resurrection stone and so because of this I thought well that's a deathly hallow which brings me to the wand you can see in this section which is of course the elder wand. This is the noble collection elder wand 
wand and I had to put it in this section because it's another Deathly Hallow and I just thought it went really well in this section with the ring which is also the resurrection stone. I do also have the invisibility cloak but as the name suggests it's invisible which is why you can't see it. <laughs> just behind the elder wand you can see a diary. This is Tom Marvolo Riddle's diary again from Noble Collection and again another item I haven't really spoken about having owned as it's another recent addition to my collection. I actually bought this at the same time I bought the diadem, which you will see in just a bit. It's quite funny because I, I was actually in the Noble Collection shop in London when I bought the diadem and the diary, and when I went to pay for them both, the person behind the till said, are you collecting horcruxes? And I was like, well, yeah. <laughs> Almost as if, yeah, that's standard, why not? collect all the horcruxes. Uh, so yes, I had to get this. It's absolutely beautiful. The pages are blank. I do think it would have been cool if it had the messages from Chamber of Secrets in it, you know, like, my name is Harry Potter. Hello, Harry Potter. My name is Tom Riddle. Do you know anything about the Chamber of Secrets? And so on. Uh, yeah, I do think that would have been cool in there. That's just something I just thought about just now. So yes, that is Tom Riddle's diary, the first horcrux to be destroyed by Harry Potter himself. Just in front of the Slytherin ring, you can see a basilisk fang. This is from Geek Gear. Again, one of my favorite items from Geek Gear. I have many favorite items from Geek Gear. I want to display it with the diary, which is why it's in this section, um, but I didn't really know how to do that. You know, just laying it on the shelf itself like I have done. It's all fine and good, but you can't see it in front of the other Horcruxes, so I had to kind of rearrange it in a way so that you can see it. And right at the back, very quickly, I have a print, which is a wanted poster for Bellatrix Lestrange. I think it looks quite good in this section. And here is the second part of my Horcrux collection. This is the absolutely incredibly beautiful Ravenclaw Lost Diadem. Just look how beautiful this is. Again, I have made a video all about the Ravenclaw Diadem, so again, go and see that if you haven't where I give you a close-up and a review of it but yes it's absolutely beautiful it's one of my favorite items and one of my most expensive items on this shelf apart from the Hogwarts castle as I said I bought this in the Noble Collection shop itself I'm so glad it's one of the items I actually bought in person as opposed to online it's good to do that because you can see it up close before you actually buy it and of course it had to have its own section. I mean, it's big enough to have its own section, but it's beautiful enough to be in its own section, to have its own section to itself. A bit of Ravenclaw pride there for you. This next section revolves around honeydukes and magical sweets and drinks. So let's start right at the front with the chocolate frog. This is actually the Noble Collection chocolate frog, the display item, not an actual edible item. The chocolate frog packaging right next to it is the box that it comes in. It also comes with a Alba Stumbledore chocolate frog card, which I've taken out. I've got a few chocolate frog cards, so I don't really know what to do with them at the moment. But yes, he's so squidgy and bouncy, and I absolutely love him. Right behind that, you can see another chocolate frog box. That is actually real chocolate frog packaging. The box itself I got from the studio tour. The chocolate frog is no longer inside. I did actually eat that. Um, but of course I had to keep the packaging for displaying purposes. Next to that, I have a box of Bertie Bot's Every Flavor Beans, and there are some beans inside. On the left side, you can see two cups. These cups are from the Warner Bros. Studio Tour in London. They are both butterbeer cups. The last time I went to the studio tour, it was with the intention of getting one of these cups or goblets, whatever you want to call them, just so I can display them on my bookshelf. And I couldn't decide which one I wanted, so I've actually got two. I've got the two different versions that you can get. I'm not personally a fan of the butterbeer from the studio tour, but I did drink it and it was all worth it to get these cups to display. So yes, I'm very happy about that. Behind that, I have a box of peppermint toads, which do have some of the peppermint toads inside. I have eaten some of them, but I saved some of them again for the box because there's a window. So it looks better if you can actually see the chocolates inside them, which have most likely gone off because they're about a year and a half old. All of these treats, the peppermint toads, the Everfavor beans box, are also from the studio tour. I bought them all at the same time. Right at the back, you can't really see it. There is a blue box. It is full of sherbet lemons, which I got in a recent Geek Gear box. I haven't eaten any of the sherbet lemons, but I do intend to having one every now and then. But I just really like the box that I thought I should put it in this section. And right at the back there, I have a book, which is the Honeydukes Scratch and Sniff Adventure. There are loads of little 
round bits within the book that if you scratch them and sniff them you can smell what the treats look like. I made a video reviewing this book sometime last year so again you can check that out. Um, but yes that is my Honeydukes sweets section. Okay so we're on to the wand section now. These aren't all of the ones I own, they're not all official and they're not even all character ones. I don't want to go into great detail about each wand in this section partly because this video is already going to be so long but also partly because I want to do a separate wand collection video. So yeah as I said this isn't all of the wands in my collection. I do have a few more, namely ones from Noble Wands which has now been rebranded to Geek Gear Wizardry Wands. But yes, like I said, I want to do a separate wand collection video so I will go into more detail about every wand here and every wand that isn't here in that video. The section along from my wands is my Quidditch section. This is a new section, something I haven't done before, but also something I've wanted to do for a long time. So the thing I want to talk about first are the three different broomsticks that you can see in this section. They are all from Geek Gear Wizardry at some point or another. My original idea for this section was to have all of the wands hanging from pieces of string to look like they were floating. And I did try it, but it was so fiddly and I couldn't get the string to stay on and the broomsticks kept falling out of it. Maybe I could find another way of doing it in the future but for now I'm quite happy with how I have got my one. So I've got one right at the front which is perching with its stand. I don't think it's supposed to be perched that way but I think it looks quite cool like that. It's almost as if the broom is ready to set off and go. The second broomstick you can see on top of my Seeker Weekly print. The stands on that broomstick don't actually work they just flop around so so I've just got it perched on top of there and I think that looks fine. A little bit disappointed with that because I believe that one was from a special edition box as well but never mind it's on top of there and the third one you can just about see on the side of my bookshelf is stuck on there with a bit of blue tack you know just to give off the effect that it's floating I guess and it's somewhere else to put it so they look all separated they're all displayed in different ways and I quite like that. You can also see there's something stuck onto the bookshelf just above that broomstick that is actually a Quidditch World Cup ticket. I believe that is also from Harry Potter's artifact box from Noble Collection. At the front, just behind the broomstick right at the front, you can see there's a book, Quidditch Through the Ages. This is the original copy of this book that I own. I've had it for absolute years. But yeah, I think that looks quite cool sat there. Next to that, we have another Quidditch World Cup ticket, which I can't remember exactly where I got that from. It was either a pop out from one of the vault books or I feel like it could have come in a subscription box. I can't actually remember where I got it from. But either way, it looks quite good sat there. I bought these little stands to perch some of my items up. You're going to see them being used in other parts of this bookshelf. Blue tacked to the other wall, I guess, of my section is the Quidditch League, which is kind of like a league table if you like. All about Quidditch and I suppose like the World Cup. This I did get out of one of the vault books. I think it might have been the artifact vault, I'm not sure but I think it looks really cool and it goes perfectly well in this section. The frame with the broomstick perched on top is a print from Seeker Weekly which is a wizarding magazine and it is advertising the Quidditch World Cup Great Final Bulgaria versus Ireland and just next to that we have a another advertisement for the Quidditch World Cup. You can't really see it behind the Quidditch Through the Ages book but it has all the names of all the countries that took part and at the bottom it says the greatest magical event of the year. So that would have been something that would have been advertised before the World Cup actually started. And right at the front stuck to the roof of this section is a golden snitch which is a key ring from Primark. One of my favourite items I've ever bought from Primark. It's so simple but so pretty and yes of course it had to go in the Quidditch section. Moving along we have my Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them section. Of course I had to have a section dedicated to the spin-off film series. So I have three Pop Funkos in this section. I have Newt Scamander holding his Occamy egg. I have a little Niffler and at the back there you can see a Demiguise. They are the only ones I've got from the Fantastic Beasts series and 
quite frankly if I'm honest the only ones I'm going to get. I have a few more pops you're going to see later on in this video but I'm not planning on collecting any more because they're just not things that I'm interested in collecting. I've got all the ones I want to get and I'm happy with that so yeah. At the front I have two books laying down. They are the screenplays for Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them and The Crimes of Grindelwald. These books are some of the most beautiful books I own. The artwork on them, the gold foiling, it's so beautiful and I love the fact that they are a thing that you can actually read the films as if they were a book almost. At the back I have the Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them illustrated edition which is an illustrated edition of Newt Scamander's original book. I did originally have this with my other illustrated edition books but I just thought it looked really nice in this section as that's what it's about. I also have a Newt Scamander diary or notebook uh, which I love and looks really cool and yeah I love that. Next to that I have three more books. I have the Newt Scamander a movie scrapbook which is based all on the first film. I have the Crimes of Grindelwald movie magic book and I have Inside the Magic the making of Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them which I got for free from Tesco's when I bought Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them on DVD. So yeah three really nice books there. The movie scrapbook I actually got from a loot crate box and the Crimes of Grindelwald book again I think is also from Tesco so a recent purchase and yeah that's my Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them section. Moving along here is my Hufflepuff section. Those of you who have been subscribed to my channel for a while and have seen my videos when I used to film in front of my bookshelf would know that this section used to be at the top and until today, until the day of filming, it actually was at the top but I just thought it looked so empty and like not enough nice things if you like to display. So I decided to move it down a few spaces so that it wouldn't be in the background of my videos when I was filming because you know, looking back at my old videos, I never really liked my Hufflepuff section. But once I moved it down to this section, that was when I actually moved it around a little bit. So the 20th anniversary edition books weren't actually displayed like that. They were just stacked side to side. And, you know, it just made the whole section look a bit emptier. And so after a bit of fiddling around, I came up with this. And I actually like this so much more. I think it's a lot more effective. But I'm still not happy enough with my Hufflepuff section to have it near the top. So it's staying down here for now. Anyway, as I mentioned, I have two 20th anniversary editions. I have one for the Philosopher's Stone and the Chamber of Secrets, the only ones that are out at the moment. I know Prison of Azkaban is going to come out very soon. So I have the black version of the Philosopher's Stone and the yellow version of Chamber of Secrets. That's because when I went to buy the Chamber of Secrets, I couldn't find a black hardback version of it. And so I thought, okay, I'll just get the yellow one, even though I prefer the black ones. But I've kind of got this idea now, something I really like the idea of, is buying them in black yellow black yellow if that makes sense so I've pre-ordered the Prisoner of Azkaban one and I've got the black one when it comes to the Goblet of Fire I will get the yellow one and so on so eventually I will have them stacked together and they'll be black and yellow at the front to the left you can see I have another bronze Hufflepuff cup this is actually from Geek Gear in the middle I have a candle a Hufflepuff candle this is from Primark I really love the HP logo at the top with this stitch flying around it I think that's really nice. Behind that you can see I have a Hufflepuff mug which again is from Primark. It has the Hufflepuff crest on it and I really like the grey and yellow checked pattern on it. It's almost like a woolly jumper. Inside the cup I have a pen. This is a Noble Collection pen, the Hufflepuff pen. It has a badger on top and the pen itself is green. I almost forgot to mention in my Hufflepuff edition of the Philosopher's Stone book sticking out I have a bookmark. This is the Hufflepuff bookmark again from Noble Collection. It just looks really pretty and I thought the best way to display it was to stick it out at the end of a book almost as if I'm currently reading Philosopher's Stone which I'm not by the way these these books aren't for reading they are for displaying purposes only behind that you can't really see it from this angle but I have a Hufflepuff notebook it's really pretty it has a leathery feel to it and it has the Hufflepuff crest on it I really like this diary but I feel like it's kind of in place of where the Prisoner of Azkaban Hufflepuff edition book would go once that comes out. I think that's next month or the month after, something like that. But like I said, I have pre-ordered that and as soon as that comes, it's gonna go somewhere where that diary is and maybe that diary will have to go 
go somewhere else. Above my Hufflepuff diary slash notebook, I have a pocket watch. This is from a Wizarding World Loot Crate box. You can't actually see it very well because the angle I've got my camera, the bookmark is in the way. So I've just moved it along a little bit. You can see it a lot better now. So yes, this is from the Wizarding World Loot Crate. It's a really pretty pocket watch. When I first received it, it did tick, but I think it's run out of batteries now. Again, when looking for a suitable way to display it on my bookshelf, I thought why not just have it open so you can see the case a bit better. And next to that, right at the back, I have a Hufflepuff print, which is from Geek Gear. And now finally, we have moved on to the bottom section of my bookshelves. This section is the Marauders section, as you can probably tell. This is also probably my least favourite section in my entire bookshelf. That's because I don't really like the way I've displayed things. You can't really see a lot of things properly. There's just a lot of things propped up and, you know, I... I just didn't really know what else to do with this section and I didn't know what else to do with the things that I had. If you have any other suggestions, then please let me know. So right at the front, I have a photograph of the Order of the Phoenix. This is from Harry Potter's Artifact Box from Noble Collection. And it's one of those photos that if you move, the characters move, the image moves, which is really nice. Next to that, I have a displate is it called? I, I can't remember. It's something I got from a Geek Gear box. I can't remember if it was a special edition or a standard edition but basically it's a stag patronus and of course that represents James Potter. Just behind that I have a framed wanted poster for Sirius Black. Next to that I have a miniature Marauders map which I got years ago. Uh, I do actually now have the full version from Noble Collection but I don't really know what I'm gonna do with that. I don't know if I wanna get the display case from Noble Collection for it or to have it all stretched out and frame it that way. I'm not really too sure yet what to do with it, but yeah, I do have the bigger version, but it's, it does, it, it's not gonna fit in this bookshelf, so I'm making do with a smaller one. And on the side, you can see there's a letter blue tacked to the side of the bookshelf. That is a letter from Lily Potter to Sirius Black, again from Harry's artifact box from Noble Collection. I really like prop replicas like that. Next door, I have what I'm calling my golden trio section. So I have four more pops in this section. These are the last four pops that I own. So I've got Harry, Ron, Hermione, and at the back, I have Dobby. Why is Dobby in this section? because again, I didn't know where else to put him and he has a strong association with Harry and the Golden Trio, so I thought he can just come in here. Just behind Harry and Hermione, I have Harry Potter's acceptance letter, which again is from the artifact box. Behind Ron, I have a floating Ford Anglia. That's in there just because, again, I want to display it and didn't know where else to put it, so that's a kind of representation for Ron, I guess. Floating above Hermione is a time turner. This is not the Noble Collection time turner, don't worry. I wouldn't display the Noble Collection time turner like this, which I don't currently have. This one I got offline, it's obviously a cheaper version, but you know, it looks perfectly fine to me. I'm perfectly happy with it. The sand does move, and as you can see, all of the little rings inside move about, so it's pretty good for what it is. Right at the back, I have a magical chest, which does have Harry Potter related stickers all around it. This I got for Christmas from my dad one year, and inside there are three candles, which represent Harry, Ron, and Hermione. They have three layered scents. Each scent, like I said, represents Harry Ron Hermione. So Harry's, one of Harry's scents is the Quidditch pitch. One of Hermione's is fresh parchment. You know, the things that they would smell if they were around Amortentia. That's what the candles are supposed to smell like, but I haven't burnt them. So I can only actually smell the top layer of these candles. But again, because they're so nice and so special, I don't actually want to burn them. So yeah, for now they are in that chest. I don't know if I want to get them out and spay them or whatever. On top of the chest, as I said, I have the Dobby Funko Pop. He is holding a sock and next to that, I have a pair of Harry's glasses, which I got from a Geek Gear box, I think two years ago. That's how long I've been subscribed to Geek Gear now. <laughs> Next up, I have my Hogwarts Express section. You may remember if you watched my limited edition Geek Gear Wizardry Hogwarts Express unboxing video that I said I had a Hogwarts Express section on my bookshelf. And if you watched that, you'd also recognize the trains in this section. The one right at the front is the one we got from the limited edition box. And the other one on top of my Hogwarts Express nine and three quarters money tin 
is the one we got in a previous ski gear box. As mentioned, I have a Hogwarts Express nine and three quarters money tin. I think that came from a special edition Geek Gear box, if I'm right. Next to that, I have a London to Hogwarts train ticket. This I bought from the studio tour. On each side of the walls of the section, although you can't really see them, I have two more London to Hogwarts tickets, smaller versions, which I got from the limited edition box. And right at the back, although you can't really see it, is a framed print of the Hogwarts Express, which I got from a Geek Gear box, again, a very long time ago, but it's one of my favorite prints. So yes, that is currently my Hogwarts Express section. And last, but certainly, certainly not least, this is the last section in my bookshelf. This is the bottom right-hand corner as you look at it, and it's just full of books. It's not the most prettiest or the best displayed section in my bookshelf, which is why it's at the bottom, but it does hold quite a few really beautiful books. So I have the Creature Vault, the Artifact Vault, the Character Vault, Harry Potter A History of Magic, a Harry Potter Diagon Alley book and the official wand book from the films of Harry Potter. So there you go, that was my bookshelf tour. I hope you enjoyed the video, please leave a like if you did and let me know down in the comments what was your favourite section, what parts of my display did you like, what parts do you think I could change. If you enjoyed this video then please don't forget to leave a like because that would mean a lot to me and if you're new to my channel then why not subscribe to join my little magical corner. I make videos every single week so come and subscribe to join the fun. Thank you all very much for watching and I will see you next time.